Hey, how's it going everyone? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can debug your test in Docker using the help of VNC Viewer. So let's get started. So before we jump onto the part on how we can set up VNC Viewer and integrate that with Docker, I think it is important to understand on why do we even need to do that. So originally, I was naming the slide view test in Docker using VNC Viewer. But I was thinking to myself, the point of setting up VNC Viewer is not that I should be able to just view the tests that are running in Docker. The point is that when something fails, I should be able to debug my test. And that is the whole point of actually set up VNC Viewer and integrating that with Docker. So to give you a little bit of background, originally when I was learning on how to set up Docker and how to set up Selenium with Docker, the first time when I was executing my test inside the Docker container, I could see that my tests were executing and I can see the report being reprinted out in my terminal. However, I could not actually see what was happening inside the container. So after spending some time on the Google, I finally figured out that I can actually use some Docker images, which will help me to see my test running inside VNC Viewer. So the overall goal of this video is not to just show you that, okay, this is how you can set up VNC Viewer is, but also to understand that the reason we are doing that is so that if the tests are failing in your Docker container, you should be able to figure that out by setting up VNC Viewer and integrating that with Docker so that you can easily debug your test. The debug keyword over here is the most important part. All right, so now that that's clear, let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to do to get started. So how can we set up VNC for Docker? Well, the first thing is, obviously, we need to set up a VNC client. So in my case, I'm going to be using real VNC. If I go over here to this link, you can download this for your particular operating system as well. So here, for example, I'm on Mac OS. I can download that. And once it's downloaded, you should be able to open that up and it will show something like this over here. If you're using Windows, it's gonna be same for you as well. All right, let's jump back over to our slide and take a look at the next step. So the next thing that you need is a Selenium debug images. So in the previous video where I explained how you can set up Selenium with Docker, we were using Selenium standalone Chrome as well as Selenium standalone Firefox images. Now, before you go further along with this video, if you haven't checked out that video, please make sure to do that. As in that video, I show you how you can set up your Selenium with Docker and also I explain why it is important for you to do that as well. Like what are the advantages you're going to get when you will be running your Selenium test inside the Docker container. So if you haven't checked out that video, please make sure to do that. I will add the link for that in the description below. All right, so coming back to the slide, so the Selenium images that we were using over there was the Selenium standalone Chrome image as well as the Selenium standalone Firefox image. However, if you need to debug your Selenium test, you need to instead use the Selenium debug images. Let me head over to this link and take a look at those images. I'm going to scroll down. In the previous video, these three images we were using, Selenium, Standalone Chrome, Firefox, and we can also optionally use the Opera one as well. But in this video, we're going to use the Chrome debug, Firefox debug, as well as the Opera debug image instead. So why is that? Because for this particular image, it actually has as usual, Chrome installed if you're using the Chrome debug, but also it has a VNC server. So that VNC server is what allows us to connect our Docker container with VNC so that we can actually see our test running inside the VNC viewer. Now that VNC server is tied to a port, which is going to be our next point. So once you have pulled these images, the next thing you need to do is map your external VNC port to the Docker VNC port, which is 5900. Now this 5900 port is already set up for that particular image. So make sure you use this exact port for your Docker container. However, for your external VNC port, you can change it to use something else instead. So you don't have to use 5900, you can use 5901, or you can use 4041, or you can use whatever kind of port that you wanna set up for your local machine. All right, these are the only steps that we need to actually set up our VNC with Docker. Now let's go ahead and implement the steps and see our test running inside VNC Viewer. All right, so previously, the way we were running our test was just simply running this command, right? So I'm just gonna copy this. And here I'm gonna paste this. So we were doing docker run dash D for the detach mode. We were passing in our port, which was our local browser port, as well as the port which was inside the Docker container for our Selenium standalone Chrome image. And then we were passing in SHM size equals 2G. This is for so that your actual Docker container can share the host memory 
and then we were passing in the actual tag for our image. Now there are a few changes that we're going to do. The very first thing is that we're going to change our image instead of using just Chrome, we're going to instead use Chrome debug image. I'm going to change that to debug. And then the next thing we're going to do is tie our VNC port to our Docker container. So here I'm going to do dash P again. That is I'm adding in additional port and I'm going to do 5900 and 5900. If you remember, I said that the port over here, which is this particular part, needs to exactly be 5900 because that is the port which is set up for the Selenium. Oh, sorry, that is the port which is set up for the VNC server. And this port can be changed to anything. You don't have to use 5900. You can change that to, let's say, over here. Oops, I keep changing that. So you can change that one to 5901, 5910, or whatever you want to keep it. But for the consistency right now, I'm just going to keep it 5900. All right, so that's pretty much all you need to actually run your test in Docker and be able to see it in the VNC viewer as well. So let me hit enter. All right, since I've already pulled this image previously, it's actually directly giving me this container ID over here. In your case, it might pull the image and then you're going to see this container ID. Now, if I do Docker PS to list out all the containers I have running, you can see I just have one container running, which is this one over here and which is tied to port 4444, which is gonna be, if I go over here, localhost 444, and there you go. I can see that over here as well. I can go to console and see there are no active sessions. But another thing, if you're gonna notice, is that there's another port, which is 5900, which is set up for our VNC server. So if I need to run my test, how can I see it inside the VNC server? Well, the first thing is we have to open up the VNC client locally. I'm going to do that by typing VNC viewer and it's going to open up the VNC viewer over here for me. Now this one, if you notice, it is your local host and then 5900. So that's the port that you're going to set up here. So I'm going to do 127.0.0.1. That's my local host. Then I'm going to do 5900. And I'm going to hit enter here. Once I do that, it's going to ask me for this encryption or unencrypted connection. So I'm just going to say either don't warn me about this again. I can do that and just to continue. Then it's going to ask me for a password. And the password is default for all of these images, which is going to be secret. So S-E-C-R-E-T. And you can also do remember password so that it doesn't ask you for it the next time. Then I'm going to click OK. Now it's trying to connect. There you go. So it has just opened up that VNC viewer and it was able to connect to that particular port. And the reason it was able to connect to that port is because we have kept that port open in our local machine. For example, if I go back there and instead change this to 5901 and hit enter, it will tell me that the connection was refused by the computer. And the reason for that is there is no open port 5901 in my local machine right now. So I'm going to close that one. 5900 is the one where we are actually running our container. That is good. Now here, what we can do is just run our test the way we were running it previously. Now, once again, if you haven't checked out the previous video, make sure to do that because I'm just following along all the steps that we've set up in our previous video. And then I'm all I'm trying to do over here in this video is to show you how you can run your test in Docker and be able to see those tests running inside the VNC viewer. So the script that we used in our previous video was the one over here, just to give you a quick overview. So this is a simple Google search video. I have set it up to run it on this server, which is 4444. And then I have everything else same. It's going to go to Google, search for Automation Bro, and then print out some content. All right, now let's head back to our VNC viewer. And then I'm going to also open up my terminal. And then I'm going to try to run my test. I'm going to do node test.js to actually run my test.js script. And then I will hit enter. And the moment I do that, just take a look at what will happen over here. There you go. It just spun up a Chrome browser. It's searching for automation, bro. And all of a sudden, it stopped that. And if I go back over here, I can actually see it printed out the test result. I can see the automation, bro, the pigeon, YouTube, which is the first search result that it finds. I can also see the Chrome browser, as well as I can see the actual browser version that it has for that particular image. So that's great. This is exactly how you can run your test inside Docker container as well as be able to see it running inside the VNC viewer as well. Now, this is extremely helpful because if you are running a, your test on a particular image, for example, if you're running it on Chrome version 90, if you're maybe running it on Opera, and if you do not have that browser or that version set up in your actual local machine, 
Instead, you can run it in Docker, and then you can see that running over here inside the VNC container. Oh, sorry, the VNC viewer. This way, you can easily debug your test and figure out what exactly is going on. You can even pause the execution and take a look at what exactly is happening, and then do your typical debugging steps that you would do for any kind of test that you would do it typically for your local machine as well. Now, keep in mind, this is not specific to just one particular browser, that is Chrome. I can also set that up for Firefox as well and be able to see the test running inside the Firefox browser. So to give an example, let's take a look at that. So here, I'm going to copy this exact command. I'm going to paste it here. Now, there are a couple of things I'm going to change. I will change this to Firefox debug because I'm going to run my test on the Firefox browser. Then I'm going to change the port. Now, which port I'm going to change? Well, it's the local port that I have on my machine not the Docker container port. This port right over here is the port inside the Docker container, but the port over here is the port on my local machine. So I'm gonna change that to 5901 because that's the port that's uh, news right now, which is available. And the next port that I'm gonna change is over here as well, which is again for my local machine. Now, the reason for that is I already have my Docker container running on port 444 over here. And then I have another 5900, which is already occupied for this container right here. All right, so a couple things we changed. We changed the image, which was from Chrome debug to change it to Firefox debug. Then we have changed our ports from 5900 to 5901 for my VNC server. Then I've changed my port for my local host as well from 4444 to 4445. All right, now let's hit enter, and then it's gonna try to pull up the Firefox image and then spin up our container. So let's do that. In my case, it already had that image, so it started the container really quickly. If I do Docker PS once again, not PSS, do Docker PS. And then over here, I can see the first container, which is this one, which it just spun up, which was for Firefox debug. And the second one is for the Chrome debug. And you notice this is on 445. This one is 5901 versus this one is, I'm not going to say it again. This is 4444. And then this one is 5900. But I hope you now understand how this works and how to actually run those containers. If I go to localhost, 444, which is the one for my Chrome. But if I go to 4445, this is the one for my Firefox. Both are open right now. Same thing I can do if I go to VNC Viewer. Previously, we were getting an error when we were trying to access 5901. I'm going to hit Enter. This time, it's not giving me that particular error. It's actually able to connect to that particular port. I'm going to say, OK, don't warn me about this again. I'm going to type in the password, which is secret. I'm going to do remember password and do OK. Now this one, you notice I have it running on 5901 and the one behind that is 5900. Awesome. Now let's try to run a test again. But before I do that, I need to update my test so that I'm pointing it to run it on the new port as well as to run it on Firefox. So I've changed this to 445 and I've changed this browser to Firefox. Once again, keep in mind, this is going to be different for your particular script that you're using. In my case, I'm using a Selenium WebDriver JavaScript script. Where This is how I'm going to actually change it. For your particular case, let's say if you're using Java or Python, you might have to change it the way your framework is exactly set up. All right, so now let's head over here. I'm going to clear everything. And I'm going to run the test again by doing node test.js. I'm going to head back here. There you go. This time, it's spinning up Firefox. You can see on the top, Firefox. And this was super quick. And there you go. We got our test results as well. Automation Bro, Firefox version 89.0. Perfect. So guys, that's how easy it is to actually run your test inside Docker container and be able to see the test within VNC Viewer as well. So this is extremely helpful, guys. Anytime you're trying to run your test inside Docker container, you definitely should be setting up this Chrome debug images so that locally you can actually see how your tests are being run. You can also debug them whenever something fails and figure out what exactly is going on. So one thing to keep in mind that the node debug images or those standalone Chrome debug images that we are using over here are not what you're going to use for your production as well or basically for your CI pipeline. For your pipeline, you're going to be using just regular standalone Chrome images because you do not need a VNC server over there. Instead, you only need that when something fails and you need to figure that out locally and to try figure out what exactly is happening with your test and debug it over there. So that's it for this video, guys. In the next video, I'm going to be showing you how you can set up Selenium Grid with Docker.
so far we have just been running individual images but we haven't set up any kind of grid at the moment but in the next video we're going to see how we can set up a selenium grid so that we can run tests on both firefox and chrome at the same time so it's going to be exciting video guys so make sure to do check that video out as well so as i mentioned in my previous video i'm going to be doing a bunch of videos related to docker so that you understand how to set up selenium with docker how to set up docker grid how you can see your test in vnc viewer how you can even integrate it let's say with aws or even maybe let's say how to run them in jenkins as well if there's any particular topic that you would like me to create content on also let me know in the comments below i always read those comments and i'll get back to you guys as soon as possible all right that's it for this video guys if you enjoyed this video please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel also if you haven't joined my mailing list please make sure to do that as well as you get access to all the videos and blog posts that i put out weekly as plus you have access to a private facebook community as well where we can talk to each other and discuss all things related to testing and automation that's all for now guys i will see you all in the next video